Let's get this going. Okay. Whoa, already we have a very, very close setup, but let's just let's just introduce everything. This is Oz Draft 2.0, a, a draft tournament for the Oz NZ community. This is the second round of matches. And we have here Team Tolandina versus Team Mr. Dodo. Both of these teams won their first round match. So it's one of the uh the winners brackets, as you would say. And here we go. We have Mr. Prawn playing as the Vietnamese, sitting closely to Choo Choo, aka Viado, playing as the Persians. Almost in range for Persian douche, but that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Further around, the closest ally, we have XXYY as the Berbers. Probably going to have Castle drop Camel Archers to come help out. And then nearby, we have Bot Marley playing as the Tatars. This is unfortunate. You really don't want to have Tatars next to next to the Berbers, because the Camel Archers just, just counter normal Cav Archers so hard. And as we continue to spread around the map, we have the Tullin here playing as the Hindustanis. And then Woot playing as the Koreans. So we can sort of see that all four of Tullin's team are on this left-hand side. Whereas for Mr. Dodo, playing as the Chinese out here, and then the final teammate, Faili, playing as the Romans. They're sitting pretty over on the right-hand corner, just chilling. They're going to boom away, get the big late-game eco. And then potentially try to get a hard carry going, is the presumption at this stage. The, the interesting part is, I think, going to be this direct 1v1 matchup between Prawn and Chushu, and then XX and Bot Marley juking it out and trying to support them. Are these 1v1 or team game ratings? I would guess that they are 1v1 ratings. That does look correct. It looks like they are 1v1 ratings. Unfortunately, the, the chat's not going to be able to see the bot command, but that is what Spec Dashboard is letting us know. So, um, considering the early start, do we think that the Roman TC went up any faster? He's like maybe half a villa ahead of some of the other players, a little bit behind some of the others, and he did only have two villagers building. So, it seems like... There's a decent chance of the Roman 5% faster building actually affecting the TC, but it's not a massive bonus. It's not like Sicilians used to be when it was absolutely cracked and it was, you know, you had a 2 build lead right at the start of the game. Chinese. Yeah, Chinese does have a very sick lead, right? They essentially get to keep their entire uh, 3 villager start lead because just the insane faster food gathering. All of these shawlfish are 250 food and you get a ton of them next to your TC. So you're never really struggling for food throughout the early game. And even into the late game, if you have enough map control, you just keep milling ponds and jumping from pond to pond and not really making a ton of farms. I'm seeing Chuchu going for a couple of the walls here. I'm not really sure of the logic for that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Prawn is getting housed at 10 pop, so he's going to fall a bill behind right here. Is it best to be on the side or the middle? Um, I would say generally you want to be within like the two ponds towards the edge. So, like, for instance, Bot Marley here is the furthest into the center, and he's just incredibly open, right? He can be easily attacked from any direction, from any player. Like, if we just pretend that Red and Purple were not on his team and were instead the, the opponents, then, you know, you could see Army coming this way from Red, this way from Purple, this way from Teal, right? He, he's just open on all sides. Whereas Red, for instance, it's much easier for him to do a bit of a wall off on this side, this side, get those wood lines, and then come towards the TC. And then he has a gold, two stones, and a berry patch, as well as all of this wood, safe in this little pocket. And then he also has the backside of this pond. Can you turn down the music like 15%? I can do that. There we are. Uh, I guess we should take a look at the uh, point of views and see if we know where players are. So this is the team that does not have Vietnamese. So we know where Blue is. Um, they potentially know that Teal is there. But then they have no real idea, I would say, about these two players at this stage of the game. Whereas if we switch to the other team's point of view, what do they see? Well, they have Vietnamese, so they obviously know where everybody is. Boom, boom. Boom. And yeah, and then obviously Orange. So that's the uh, the big strength of having Vietnamese in your team. Their units are decent. They've got Radon, they've got Elephants, 
but really it's the the TC location. It gives you full information. You know what the correct strategy is to go for almost always. But we see here we've got three players up to Feudal Age. Obviously one of them is Choo Choo. Um, he's not any. He's on stone. Okay. A tower here to deny the fish sounds really great. And they're potentially deleting these walls and getting around to this top pond would be would be pretty strong denying all of that from Prawn. And Prawn is just. The man's got no chill. He's just going up. Looks like he's going to do FC Castle Drop, potentially, with his safe stone. Just wild that more than 15 bills is slow on this map. I mean, yeah, just the amount of food income that you have in the early game is absolutely insane. You, you can do whatever you want in the early game. And then, okay, with the Tatar player going for a stable, we're going to have the Hindustani player also go for a stable, and then Kryptonian's... FC wagons makes a lot of sense. I I like that. I think it's a little bit risky to have all of your players committing to some sort of army though, because both of these players doing scouts means they're not booming. And then over on this side, you're potentially going to have two players who are just free booming. So unless you absolutely defeat teal and blue, you would expect that Dodo and Failure are going to very very quickly have a 20 30 bill lead. Got over here. Okay, we do see that tower. Uh, I would have preferred it to be a bit closer, to be honest. You sort of have to get fletching if you want to be able to deny all of this pond. Like, I probably would have built it touching this tree here. I guess maybe that's in range of the TT? Okay, maybe like one tile back from that. Like, I would have moved at least one tile forwards to try to hit more of this pond. Okay, I guess he's going to commit to another tower. But even like this, you see, he can still sort of get that top... The top side of this fish. And while this is going on, he's not actually pressuring any of his other resources just yet. It's very, very slow progressive tower push. Oh, but orange. Mr. Marley is sending bills forwards along with his tower. I think XX should be able to defend this, right? As soon as he has a scout or two, just send the bills. Does he just not see this? What's going on? Why is he not building a... Uh... You... Oh, okay, he's going for his own tower. Good, good, good. That's what I want to see. Because you really can't afford, I think, to let up a tower in this very vulnerable position. It throws his wood line, it throws his main food income. Oh. Looks like that villager oh, close to dying there. And just diving under the TC. <laughs> Stealing his sheeps. I like that. I like that very much. Yeah, I think at this point, Marley's in a decent position. Especially with red scouts here to help out. Just tower the wood line. And then XX sort of has to... Oh, the bloody... Why does this... No, yeah, go away. I think he has to commit and just send the bills and fight this tower. I think if he lets this tower get built and then walled in... Yeah, there we are. Send the boys and girls. Get in there. Get the fight going. Just having that many villagers involved in the fight should be a massive lead for him. There are two players with scouts though, but not a ton of bills for Mr. Marley. Unfortunately though, XX has already lost his first scout. I guess this is a decent idea. Pull it back towards the tower a little bit. Try to get the tower to fire some extra arrows in. But XX is actually... I think he waited a little bit too long. If he tried to fight this tower instantly before there was this many scouts, he would have had a much better chance at actually completely denying this but look at his eco kd 05 already marley has oh he's just lost his first villager it looks like the tower it's gonna go up but it will get denied i think i think it'll just get bashed down but xx has taken so much damage right there he's got not got any wood income at this moment all of his bills are just stacked under the cc trying to get the food to keep making more scouts and he loses some more no 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 more. he's still just on the five deaths over on this side Prawn is just trying to get his FC up. He's got the market and the blacksmith wall. This tower from Viado. I think it's just overkill. He did not need to build both of these towers, I think. He has three towers to deny a single pond, when really one tower should have done the exact same thing. I, I would have much preferred trying to get a tower up on this side to deny this wood line and deny this pond. And like, especially seeing as blue is just going to be mining his own stone, he can always build a counter tower if he has to. But ideally, he just wants to get up the castle, aid, drop a castle. Probably just drop a castle in front of this relic, to be honest. Which will kill the TC. It is a Persian TC, though, so it will take a very long time to uh, to fall down. But here we see, like, Dodo has just FC'd. He's going straight into three TCs, getting that boom rolling. And on the other side, Woot is on the way up the castle. He's on gold. He's on a little bit of stone, so he is going to get his castle drop going. I'm not sure what you're doing there, though, Bailey. Bailey made scouts? Ooh. I don't like that. I guess, yeah, he's just so far away on the map to be able to make his scouts. By the time he gets to your opponent, like any of the opponents, like even to the closest ones, 
They have easily made two or three spears, or two or three scouts, or two or three anything. They're walled up. It's just almost impossible to get significant damage in when your units have to travel this far to get anywhere. I mean, I say that, but then there are some exposed villagers just roaming all over the map for Mali. So, if he does group up two or three scouts and gank these villas, there could be a decent amount of damage. The question is, does Mali see the scouts as they run past? Oh, okay, over here we see some villas actually going down. Mali has actually lost quite a few villas. Oh, and the tower stayed up. Oh, no, XX. XX. XX is not in a great position. I mean, he does still have the trees under his TC, so he will be able to get another lump camp at some point. But he's... Whew, 3 to 8 eco KD. Really not looking that great right now. He's the same villagers as Prawn, who was in the Castle Age. There we do see the castle. Um, could he have gone one tile further forwards? I don't think so. Like I said, it's a little bit unfortunate this position, but it will clean up that first tower. And then, obviously, destroy the TC as well. Give him access to this gold if he needs it. Ooh. The Trush is continuing. I... I think that he needed to commit to a defensive tower on his gold. Yeah, this doesn't seem ideal for, for Mr. Prawn right here. Especially since there's all these scouts here as well. Okay, now it's walling out this tower. Where are these villagers going? Okay, they're just going to walk around. Oh, imagine, imagine trying to wall in these villages on the pond. But yeah, Prawn's going to actually struggle a little bit for food right here. He can't, he, I guess he can take this gold underneath his castle soon, which is nice. Trying to rush up this tower. I don't know if this is a great idea. Uh, the Korean player does have a castle, does have wagons on production and going for a second TC. Oh, no, never mind. He does rush it up. It's up. Just repair that, that gate a little bit, make sure the scouts don't get in. And then he's chilling. He is in a fine position. XX is not in a fine position. Marley's just chilling over there, chopping some wood. And Marley himself is also not really in the best position. I think he did a ton of damage. Far too much damage, to be honest, against XX. But his, uh... As I said, like, because he's in the middle of the map, all of his resources are exposed. He has to be constantly on the lookout, trying to defend every side of his base to prevent taking, you know, unnecessary damage. Here we see, like, by the time the scouts have really gotten over here to deal significant damage, like, Woods lost a couple of ills, sure, but he's in Castle now, he's making the wagons. He will be fine, I think. XX trying to get some return damage in. Losing a lot of HP and taking a lot of camel hits there to kill a vill or two. Tolan has lost some other vills somewhere else. I guess they were probably around this mill. There's just so much going on in this map. There's aggression in every corner almost, except for the right corner. Over here, we just have Mr. Dodo dropping a 4th TC. He's also built a stable, and making a couple of camels. I wonder if he's going to be aggressive with his camels. I think I'd probably... If I was him, I would just make like three or four camels, if I had to, just to defend myself. And just say, yo, rest of the team, you're on your own. Figure your shit out, and then I will come bail you out in five or ten minutes' time. Because his eco lead is just absolutely cracked. Like, he's 73 bills. The next highest is 44. <laughs> like, it's, it is a significant lead. And like, yes, Chinese are a good sieve, but I think you could have this lead with any sieve that has a decent eco bonus. You know, there might be two or three vills, maybe five or six vills behind what Dodo has as Chinese. But I think that it, it could be basically any sieve that's just untouched and free booming in a corner like this is in a, oh, he's even going for a CT. It just has so many... So many options for how they can can carry this game. Oh, it looks like there's been some uh, vill bashing of the unwalled in Viado Towers. Oh, we're going for another castle right here. I really don't like that castle position. What unit does Green go into to dominate? Probably Cavalier and Camels. Would be my guess. You want Cav units that you have mobility and you can get around and, and raid people's egos, deny the pawns. And then you... If you're making Cavalier and you know you're against Hindustanis, you sort of have to add Camels so that you can somewhat take a fight. Old school Bedouins. No, no, this is Bedouins. There is no other version of Bedouins. That's called African Clearing, and that is just a shit map. Bedouins is the far superior version. Where you have much fish, you never need to make a farm, you just chill. 
You expand, you take ponds, you get map control. I say you never make a farm. The one player who's made a farm is trying to kill a castle with a TZ. <laughs> what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You're never going to kill a TZ castle. <laughs> Why are you garrison? Why are you not? I mean, I guess there are some knights running around. Oh. Yeah, Choo Choo, Mr. Viado, is not having a very happy time right here. Where is his team? Why is the team not here to help? Is Tolandina back in Ozzyland? Yes, he is. Dodo fast imp into sling. I mean, it is a possibility. I do not think it is a good possibility, though. Oh, we see here Blue's just walking under the CC. Those Rens could probably come sit down here, maybe sit over here and deny this gold. But it looks like Mr. Choo Choo is going to get straight up defeated. Does he have any villagers elsewhere? Okay, he does have some villagers on the top corner. But you can't really say that this top corner is safe. And it's very well behind enemy lines at this point. How many Persian TCs to take out a castle? Probably... I mean, you've got the same amount of HP, but the TC does half as much damage and fires half as many arrows. So you need at least two TCs. But then you also need to garrison 20 villas in those two TCs to match a castle that has, you know, close to nothing garrisoned in it. Which is not, uh, not ideal. And we see here, well, we just got mass expansion through the middle of the map of purple, orange, and red, just securing this left-hand corner. I think that if they're paying any attention to how this game is going, they need to recognize that Mr. Dodo is just free-booming. He has a huge score lead compared to every other player in this game. They need to take measures to stop him just destroying everybody. He's building a castle. He has two castles now. Is he going to go for Chuko News? I guess in theory, Chukunus are the stronger unit option, but they're slower. Oh yeah, he's even going for Fletching. Okay, he's going for Chukes. It's definitely the it's the better unit comp, right? The Chukunus and then maybe some Helbs or BBT is like the ideal units for Chinese. But the biggest issue is that they're slow, and you can't really raid into people's ecos. And I guess they might even struggle a little bit with Castle Age War Wagons, just because they're so tanky and so much Pierce Armor. Oh no. What are you doing, my man? you got knights on this side. you got one knight there that's dying. You've got two Radons over here killing him. Oh. This is a sad, sad, not ideal, more like idle. <laughs> okay, the wagons are here to try to save the villas, try to give them an escape route. He's adding another TC at the top. I mean, I guess if that's all he can do, then he, he sort of has to do it. But at any time, if they notice that he's got a little a colony up here... Dodo's team can just turn around and wipe that out. I uh, know those are just some random walls being attacked. XX is trying to expand. He does have a very solid army of camels here playing against the Bobas. He does have those cheaper stable units. There's actually quite a lot of army being made here from Tullin and Bot Marley. But the issue then is you have so many players making army that no one's really big booming. Like, Tullin's up, he's got 93 vills, he's 50 vills behind Mr. Dodo. Um, full camels versus full Chukonu is not going to be ideal. And then just with this mass castle expansion, Dodo is going to secure so many stones, so many golds, and also so many ponds for his team, and specifically Faily, I guess, to expand into and continue just gobbling up the free food. He's got a siege rush up. He's taking into Rams as well. So Rams and Shukanus seem to be the play. And we're going to see here that Castle Age Wagons are probably decent. Talking from exper experience, Viado on Bedouins is a mood. I mean, did those villagers die or did they escape? He has 26 vills. Most of them are not up here. So where are the rest of them? Oh, he is escaping. Okay, they're heading down this way. This is what I, I do like this, okay? He's at least managed to get some of his eco out and he can start to boom back in at the bottom of the map, but it's not going to be a very uh, fast review. Even if he is Persians and the TCs do work a bit faster, he's just going to have so little eco to actually spend on making more eco. Um, I don't particularly like the large amount of farms that are being built already. Like, you guys have so much map control in this corner of the map. Just, just expand. Take all the ponds. Save that wood for other things. It's also just faster gathering. 
I guess the the trick of news firing extra arrows is decent against all the uh, the PS armor, but there are quite a lot of wagons here defending, and this is just stalling out uh, Dodo's push, which is buying time for Tullin to get imp himself, get heavy camel on the way. But does he really want to fight Chukunus with heavy camels? I don't really think so. Um, yeah, he's sort of forced into fighting the Castle Age XX, the lowest score player on Mr. Dodo's team, instead of dealing with the big Dodo carry coming in here. Sea Drams and Chukunu, they are almost fully upgraded. They are elite. They've got rocketry. They're just waiting on the last armor upgrade. And then they will be fully up elite Chukunus. He's getting masonry as well. Securities. He's uh, stronger castles. Roman Bill's gathering shorefish. Fastest food gatherer in the game. Where is Sussel? Um, that's actually a good question. Are they faster than Japanese fish, though? Once they've got, uh, kill nets. I guess in this situation, in a, in a standard land map, then yes, they are definitely the fastest food gathering unit. Yeah, the wagons are still buying a little bit of time, but each can't deal with these uh, the sea drams right here. And while this is going on, Tolan is still trying to get a good engagement. He is not clicking imp camel just yet. He's just sticking with heavy camels for the time being, trying to to trap in and kill as many of XX's army. But once again, we're just completely ignoring Dodo. Uh, Viado, aka Choo Choo, is on up to 40 Cs. XX is continuing to expand leftwards. I think that's the wrong way to go. I think he needs to evacuate, you know, 10 or 20 bills, and try to get some TCs out this way, closer, hide in the shadow of Daddy Dodo, and let him protect some amount of ego, so that he doesn't get completely defeated in this position. If Woos can get Onager, can he hold for ages? That is probably his best bet. The problem is going to be getting to Onager. Like, these Siege Rams are probably going to just walk through these castles pretty quickly, and once the castles are down, there's nothing really stopping the Shuganus just ro rolling in. Another forward castle coming in. He needs a few extra... He does need a few more Rams. I do take that back. That castle survives. Does it? Yep, survives on 380 HP. This one's going to survive with significantly more than that. And the Camels are starting to come in to help out. At the same time, Faye is in the Imperial Age. He's getting plate fighting armor and Cavalier. Uh, I didn't notice if he got the unique tech, but I assume that he has not. So it's just going to be vanilla Cavaliers versus Indian Imperial Camels, or soon to be Imperial Camels. Which is definitely not the uh, the sort of engagement that you want to be taking. Cavaliers versus Camels? Not ideal. Uh, Woot does still have a very sick eco at the moment. He's got a lot of bills. He's getting an extra castle down the bottom. He has not made any siege workshops as far as I can see. So he's not really planning or thinking about the, uh... Yeah, he's getting braces straight away. He's not going for the Onager line. Which is potentially a bit of a risk. Chinese are notoriously weak to upgrade an Onager sibs. Because they're Chukano... They're very flimsy. You know, they've only got 50 HP and they've got very low range. They've only got 7 range. Instead of, you know, normal ARBs that have 8. One range, it's not a lot, but it does it does make it that little bit easier to tank an Onja shot in the face and just get absolutely flattened. Over on the other side, Marley is still continuing to do some Castle Age aggression, trying to poke around up this way. As Mr. Prawn hits Imp himself, he's going to have strong Rattan Archers soon. He's also teching into Helbs, in case that's necessary. And up on the top side, yeah, Chuchu just can't really afford to do anything except for Boom. He has got a solid Vilnet count already. He's up to 85 Vils, which is definitely impressive. Oh, and they're going for elite war wagons. I guess quite a few Chukunus have died there. The Imperial Camels did surprisingly well in that engagement that we did sort of miss the most of. But it did happen. Some mass castle defense right here. There are still a ton of rams here. But if the uh, if the Camels come back, they could potentially kill these rams. Yeah, and like, as I said, this is just the biggest issue with going for Chukunus, is they're slow. They are strong, but they are slow. You're just slowly walking across the map, a very slow push. I keep emphasizing this because it's just so impactful. Like, there's there's nothing that they can really send into this eco to raid Tullin. Like, in theory, Grey could do so with some of his Cavalier. He's also switching into Longswords and Pikemen, it seems. Doing the infantry switch, which I think makes a lot of sense. You want to get infantry to try to counter the Camels. But like once he has imp camels, which Tolan does have, you can't raid him with cavalry anymore. Whereas Dodo was imp, 
you know, a solid two minutes faster, he could have had, you know, 20, 30, 40 Cavaliers or Camels just roaming under these TCs, denying all of these resources, denying the golds, back before Tullin was fully online with his eco. And now we see the fact that XX, all of his eco um, advancement has been to the left-hand side, turning around and biting him in the ass. These TCs are just getting absolutely shredded by mass Imperial Camels right here. He's lost quite a few villages already. 1022 KD. He's starting to get the migration going to the right-hand side, but it might be a little bit too late. He might lose too many villages right here. 42-minute double bid axe for Viado. That's rough. I will say that. Uh, where is the infantry spam? Okay, the infantry spam is going to start coming in here from the center of the map, it seems. We've got Helbs. And that's really all that Faley is going for right now. He does still have some Cavalier roaming around, but not a... Not a ton already on the field. Uh, these wagons, they're doing their best. But I would just, the, the, the shout out from chat going for Onagers, I think would have been so much stronger. Oh, and Blue has figured out that Viado is up here. He's got a castle. I would assume that there's going to be some Baba Cannons or Trebs coming out in the very, very near future. Just to wipe out this... This player that's hiding in the north corner, they want to take these resources. They want to secure this corner of the map. Potentially gets a uh, trade going along that line. That was the Imp TC as well. Was that the Imp TC for XX? Oh, that is unfortunate. If that was the case. War wagons fire so slowly. Oh, yeah, they do. I mean, these Imperial Camels are... They're doing a pretty good job. I will be honest. Okay, we do see a Manganel. It's not an orange, but it's it's close. It's half of an orange. Doing, you know, half of the damage. But there is the potential to be on the, the right train of thought to get to the correct units. Uh what's next up? Yeah, I feel like Dodo's push is sort of stored out a bit. He does have a, still a lot of chukunus. Most of them though are just walking across the map, right? There's just mass Chukanus heading to the front line from all the castles that are back in his base. Which just sort of adds to the slowness of his push. But while this is going on, Woot is... Is kind of dying. He's down to less than 80 bills now. He was on a solid 120 bills not that long ago. It's Jova, says Soxy. I mean, I do not uh, disagree with you right now. It certainly does look over now, especially with these Chukanu pushing this way. Oh, he's trying to switch to Elite Skirms. I mean, I don't hate the idea of doing Elite Skirms. It sort of double counters, right? It counters the Helbs, it counters the Skirms. It doesn't really deal with the Rams, but if you can kill most of the other units, then somebody else can deal with the Rams. But Tullin just seems to be committing far too much of his time and army killing the player who's already dead. And I say already dead, but XX still has 100 bills somewhere. Mostly hiding in this top corner. <laughs> okay. Not the best position to have the bills in, but as long as he's still alive... He is wasting Tullin's time, giving Dodo and Faley, I should not forget Faley, even more opportunities to keep pushing down in this southern region. Woot fought valiantly, but hard to hold us fully boon Dodo. 100% agreed. Did I see the unique tech for Onagers coming in? Um, Probably not, because he hasn't had a castle for a while. Oh, and we do see the GG being called right now. Yeah, there's just far too much damage being done on this bottom side of the map. The wind goes to the Zodo. Yeah, like, as I said, like, I just didn't like the fact that you had two players making scouts just to double XX. When you don't really know where two of the other players are, and if you don't know where they are, then they're probably in the corner that you haven't scouted and they're just booming. And we just, we just skip to here. And we could take a look. Oh, it's the wrong point. We want to look at this point of view. Right. Away. Right. If, you, if you've only seen two players, and you have this big unscouted corner, you know, at least one of the other two is going to be in this corner, booming. And then all of your players are committing to some sort of aggression. Right. You've got the double scouts from red and orange, and even like coming to the four towers as well. You've got yellow dueling it out with blue. And then purple's going FC Wagon. So no one's just pure booming to to deal with the the big enemy eco. 
scouts times 2 plus trust teams heavy feudal. Is the Korean the right Civ to boom there? I think it is. I, I think Tatars obviously cannot be the boom Civ because they're closest to Teal. And they are also got a pretty decent... Um, eco upgrades, uh, eco yeah, eco bonuses, and and situation to be able to do a bit of an aggressive push, and then they also have probably the weakest late game out of all the sieves for this team. Like CA plus Hussars versus Chinese is like maybe okay, but his position in the middle of the map makes it very very difficult to boom. So one of red or purple needed to just be pure booming is my suggestion, and I think it probably should have been Hindustanis. Going for Imperial Camels versus the Chikunos is a slightly dicey proposition, but the mobility is massive, and just the strength of the War Wagons in early Castle Age is something that you shouldn't discount. Getting, you know, 10 to 20 War Wagons with Bodkin Arrow, you can just walk under TCs and kill whoever and whatever you want to. And then, like, their late game army, realistically, is going to be Helms plus Onagers. Which is definitely strong, but it's, again, slow and immobile. Which is great if you're only fighting the Chinese player in, like, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just in the, here in the middle of the map. But as soon as you need to help any of your other teammates, you cannot do anything. Bully Boom Koreans can also hold 1v2 versus Chinese and Romans. True. But the Roman player can also just send their cavalier somewhere else, right? Like, Grey could just go up here, raid orange, raid yellow, get around the back into this side of the eco. Right? They, they're not forced into just fighting Korean Onagers plus Elves. They've got other options that they can go for if they want to, because they have at least one of their players being slightly more mobile. Now, let's see. What sieves did we get correct and incorrect? Gajaras was not there. Hindustanis was, Koreans was, Tatars was, and then they had Persians. And those are all losses. And I could also redeem the uh, prediction. Which is Team Dodo. that only had 21% of the bets. But managed to win it out. And then for the other side, we had the Berbers, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, and the Romans. Okay, so far I'm pretty good. I'm I'm seven out of eight sieves. Seven out of eight. We, we want to keep track of that. We're going decently so far with the sieve predictions. We're in a solid position. No need to pay up predictions. Let's just double or nothing on next game. Ah. <laughs> uh. So this means that we're going to be going into Tolento map. We're going into arena, number twos. Do we want to change any of these sieves? Burgundian and Slav pockets with Poles and Bengali seems decent to me. Chutans and Lithuanians. Chutans is going to be a flank. Lithuanian pocket, Goth pocket, and Malay. Yeah, I like those. If I'm being honest. Which then means, are they going to use Gujaras on Arabia instead of Khmer? Or do they have a Gujara pocket behind the Tudans and you just go in Castle Age Elephants and just completely defeat someone? That is the question. Do we have Gujara pocket behind Tudans for the memes... Or do they just not use Gajaras? They have to use Gajaras. They picked it so early. It has to be used at some point. It would just be a huge waste not to have it. And that... Are Gajaras stronger than Khmer? I don't... think so. I think that I would prefer Khmer over Gajaras on Arabia, if I'm being completely honest. Do we need to pick our home map for this? Um, 
I'm not 100% sure on the wording on the handbook off the top of my head. Um... A quick skim didn't say anything about it. So, I guess potentially you could pick Arabia? But I'm not sure why you would do that. Because Arabia is their home map, and you want to lose 2-1 if you're going to lose. Because, remember, you don't want to be the first team that loses 2-0. So, if you think that Arena is like a almost a guaranteed win for yourself then you should always be taking it, because you want to get that game if you're able to. Okay, Liam does confirm that you can pick Arabia first if you wanted to. But I, I do see that their lobby there in already does have Arena picked, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, exactly. In the best of three in the Swiss system, it doesn't make sense. Because you, you want to get as many game wins as you can possibly get. And so, picking their home up and then potentially losing 2-0 is just... Just a little bit of a throw, to be honest. Unless you're not confident on your home map. But if you're not confident on your home map, why did you pick it? There are questions there to be asked. Um... I think I'm going to make the decision that they use Gajaros instead of Goths on Arena. I'm going to I'm going to lock that in. That is my guess, and we're going to go from here and see if we're correct or not. As we uh update our predictions based on the previous sieves that have been used. Yeah, I think here the big question the only question is do Italians and Bengalis switch? Bengalis are strong because they're monks, and I guess Dodo's team does have Mr. XXYY on it, and he is a bit of a clown. So, giving him Bengalis seems to make quite a bit of sense in my mind, in which case Italians sticks on Arabia, which I'm fine with. Okay, I, I think I'm happy with that. Is Lith that good on Arena? Aren't they kind of meh without relics? Well, the thing is that you can test the relics, right? You, you go up with some scouts and you collect relics. But you only need two relics, and then lightest three shot helps. So, obviously four relics is better against anything else, or if there's potentially you know, ranged units supporting you from behind. But as long as you have two relics, you will shred helps in like any sort of close to equally matched fights. And then as Noah says, on 4v4, it's pretty easy to get at least three relics. Because there's eight relics on the map, you've essentially got one per player. So, as long as your team is not absolutely potato, you should be able to get a reasonable number quite comfortably. And, like, as I said, you probably want to be going for scouts on your way up. You know, you, you sort of do, like, that 1v1 arena build order, where you go FC, but you make three or four scouts on the way up. You maybe get light cap if you need to, just to secure those relics that you want. And especially if you do have Chutans and Gajaras doing weird shit on one side, you probably don't expect there to be very much... Uh, what's the word? Interference from other civs contesting their relics. Because the flank versus the Tudens is getting trushed, so they're not going to be doing anything just to contest the relics. And then the pocket is either trying to help the Tuden player, or they're getting Gajara rushed themselves. So, they also can't really contest the relics. So it's basically just a 1v1 between yourself and your opposite pocket in a fight for the relics. Would be how I see it. I wonder if Burmese a dark horse pick for Arena with Lith. Um, you mean so that you can see the relics? I don't think that that's really that important. The uh, the center of the map is so limited that you shouldn't really have too many issues scouting. You know, at least five to six of the relics when you have four players of scouts, especially if the Lithuanians also making their own scouts. Who won the draft? Um. I mean, I think that's a very, very hard thing to say without knowing what the teams are thinking about and what their plans are. I think going into it before game one, 
I think I would have favoured Talon's team a little bit. But then they played Persians instead of Gajaros, which I'm not a huge fan of. So, forcing Gajaros onto Arena, I don't, like, Gajaros are decent for Arena. They can, they can make some weird, meme shit happen, but I don't think they're that good. Didn't want Kajara and Hindu. Yeah, that was the other, that was what I was discussing right at the start. Like, do you switch Hindustanis instead of Khmer, so that you have a Camel Sieve on each? But, I, I don't think the Kajara are better than Khmer on Arabia is the problem. I think the Khmer is... Khmer is definitely better in mid-feudal, once you've got your farm eco rolling. They're definitely better in Castle Age if you're doing for Mass Knight Spam. And then... In early imp, there is, I guess, a question where Heavy Camels versus Cavaliers, the Kajara should be better. But then once you get to late imp, I think the Khmer just have better units again. I wouldn't go full Bengali Monks against students, that's true. But I mean, like, he is probably a player that is comfortable playing as Bengalis, if he has to. Although I guess the fact that they did choose to pick Bengalis after their opponents already had students might mean that they don't want to do that. I guess there is also the possibility of having a Bengali pocket and then probably Burgundians on the flank. But that seems a little bit silly in my mind. I think Slouds and Burgundians just makes a ton of sense as the uh, as the pocket combo, where you've got Helps each sieve and you've got a good Cav sieve. I mean, I guess as as I did say, like Bengalis and Italians could be a switcheroo, but I do think Italians are stronger for Arabia, and then they're probably similar strength. For arena flanks. Poles trush with Bengali boom behind. I mean, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. But then, like, which one of Slavs and Burgundians is on the flank? It's a bit... Yeah. Neither of them really stands out to me as a... As a strong dominant flank sieve. For arena, specifically. Sarah pocket for Mimalukes? Nah, I don't think so. I think if you were to do Saracen Pocket, you sort of have to do Heavy Camels to begin with, and then you switch into Mamluks, because they're just so slow to get into, and they're so expensive. And then, like, the fact that you don't really have a proper eco bonus, like, you can obviously do some market shenanigans to get your boom going, but once you've used the market a little bit already, you don't have any long-term eco boosts, I should say. Well, the game is about to start, so I'm going to chuck up an ad while we get into it. And then we will jump into the arena. Oh, whoops, i got to leave the game first before I can join the new one. Let me go do that. Prediction, please. Yes. Good shout, good shout, good shout. There we are. Predictions are up. Need to get channel pointers back. Exactly. <laughs> Since when do you not pick prawn? Uh you've been caught out there, man. Oh, we are going to jump into game number three. Not game number three. Game number two of the tournament set here between Team Talon and Team Mr. Dodo. Uh, we'll start with Dodo's team, since they did win the previous game. We have XX here playing as a Bengali flank. As as we did claim, XX is a bit of a clowny player, so Bengalis makes a lot of sense. He is supported by the Dodo as a Burgundian pocket. 
On the other side, we have Buggy jumping in as the Slav Pocket. And then your final flag is Faley as the Italians. So that means that they have Poles for Arabia flank? That doesn't make any sense. I feel like Poles as a flank made s just was perfect. But, uh, okay. Against Mr. Faley, we do have the Mali. Bot Mali as the Tudans. We're going to see the big Tudan trush once again. We saw this to devastating effect in Tullin's first series against Mr. Liam, where they essentially defeated Snedo. Rest in peace, Snedo. Where he was basically defeated out of the game at minute 15. Very unfortunate. Bailey is in a decent position, I think, to, to deal with that sort of shenanigans. Supporting Mr. Marley, we do have Tullin playing as the Gajaras. We're potentially going to see Castle Age elephants getting onto the field, supporting the Chutan Trush, and just rolling through this base. That might be a possibility. On the other side, we have the Choo Choo, we have Viado playing as the Lithuanians, probably going to be going for scouts into Boom, collecting the relics. And then finally, we have Woot playing as the Malay on the flank. Maybe Faley is just not experienced with Poles. I mean, he is a renowned Bill Rusher. I'm sure he has played a decent amount of Poles in the past. Although, possibly not on Arena. You can't really Bill Rush very effectively on Arena. And I just think that Poles would be in a really would be probably one of the best civs to possibly defend a a Trudent Trush. The question is, did Dodo's team watch my cast of Tullin's Arabia of uh, Tullin's Arena game? Because my suggestion was you have the Oh no, Buggy! Buggy lost a fill to a four. That is unfortunate. Um my suggestion was that you have the pocket drush. Right? It's going to slow down your FC a little bit. You're going to spend some gold and, and food, obviously. But you make three. You maybe even make five militia. And you just come out here and you just fight the Truton Bills before they can build their first tower. Before they can wall it up. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Oh, but we do see the Drush. Oh, okay. Faley is the one going for the Drush. Okay, I like it. Somebody is listening. Somebody is watching. Somebody knows what's up. Maybe... I hope they notice that he equipped up. He does have the mining camp on stone already. And here come... Here come the boys and girls. The Trush is on the way. Is tower hopping still a thing? Yes. But it only works if a gate is at the corner. Or if there is another resource at the corner. For instance, like if there was a, a tree. Or a gold mine or something like that in the corner tile. The thing is that only 3 militia versus 7 bills isn't going to work out. And does he have loom? He does not have loom himself. He's getting it right now though. He needs to send his own bills. Yep, here we go. Yes, get the build. Let's get this going. Let's have a party here. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, but look at this. Tullin is up pretty fast. I guess this is probably still an FC, though. Okay, right, it's still just a 23 plus 2 FC. Never mind that. And oh, boy. <laughs> look at him run away. He's like, nope. We are out of here. And one villager goes down already. The other pocket scout is here to help out. The whole team is here to help out, almost, except for Blue. Oh no, Blue is here as well. This is sick teamwork and a good plan from Faley. They recognize that the Trudent Trust is coming. Oh, there's another villager. Oh, Molly. Getting absolutely stone cold wrecked right here. Two vills down. And no damage to show for it. And now he just goes back and he's just going to slowly boom. And yes, Faley has a ton of idle time. And yes, he has created three militia. But he's killed two vills for his trouble. Imagine getting red so hard that you see militia countering you. I mean, I think it was pretty obvious <laughs> what was going to happen if we're if we're being fair. Where are these bills going? Does he not have? The, I guess he doesn't have the wood for his buildings. Oh, Tolan, you've messed up your FC, man. You need to have you know a lot more wood. You need three hundred and twenty-five wood when you hit feudal age. Oh, there's a villager trapping his wood line as well. Okay, he's going to have to commit to make three bills in Fuel Age, I would guess. Yeah, because he doesn't have two bills winning the market. So, he's going to have to make three bills now. It's going to slow him down a little bit. The question is, does he still commit for the the, the Castle Age elephants? Oh, he is holding the gate open, though. Bailey, you need to go punch that camel. Yeah, there we are. Just to make sure that the gate doesn't stay open. Yeah, the, the question is, does... Does the Siege Elephant play come into this, or does he just turn around and go back into a boom? 
I guess the trush could always happen later in the game. Probably not ideal at that point. He's going for a very early market as well. I guess the nice thing is the Trutons are fairly easily able to adapt and transition into an eco mode because they're cheaper farms. Hey, Obadiah, how's it going? Tullin may be watching bot and giving guidance, throwing off the build order. I mean, why would he be watching and why would he be giving guidance? The trush build order is pretty pretty self-explanatory most of the time. I think Fraley's going to struggle to click up, though. He's got 100 food in the bank and no farms. I guess he's just going to buy his way to Castle Age, seems to be the play. I don't really like that, to be honest. I guess it's just Defensive Castle and Jenbo's is the order of the day. On the other side, the two flanks seem to just be peacefully chilling, doing their FCs, gonna get some boom going. Pockets, Mr. Dodo, going for heavy plow. I assume he's gonna get a uh, bow sword pretty soon, getting that sick Burgundian boom going. Throwing out the idea of mid-castle age trush. I mean, if Tolan is going to commit to castle age war elephants, or not war elephants, siege elephants, then I think towers to support that make a lot of sense. But, um... If he's just going to sit back and boom, then I think Marlon just needs to get himself up to Castle Age and just try to boom himself. And I think, yeah, Marley's going to be up to Castle Age quite a lot faster than... than, uh... Mr. Faley here. He's got a decent amount of gold. He's going to have to sell a lot of stone if he wants to buy his way up to Castle. With the eco that he has right here. Yep, he's, he's selling his soul trying to buy his way up to castle. I don't know why he didn't just make like five or six farms in Feudal Age. Or in Dark Age, sorry, I should say. Oh, okay, no, we do see a Monk play coming in from XX. I don't know if I like it. Monk Siege, when you know your opponent has Trudens, is sus. And if you, you're against the Thuanians, you expect them to make scouts. So... There's just two things that are going to potentially screw up. Is it fast imp without? Fraley's doing a fast imp with no food. How is he going to fast imp from blue? Resources? Mm, I don't think so. He's only got 400 food. Yeah, and he's going for a for an armored elephant and eco upgrades as well. So no, no fast imp on the side. And Dodo. He's going for a Monastery. I guess he's going to try to snipe these two relics. Potentially that one. The three. Maybe this one. At best, he can get four relics. But realistically, he's not getting this middle one. He could get that one. This one, I think, would be very difficult. Oh, really late Monk Rush, but not fast in. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a bit surprising if you try to, if you do it this late, right? Your opponent's already started, started to build TC, so they don't have the resources that they need to, uh... Oh, he even gets the conversion off. The one scout should be able to come in here and kill the monk. Will the other monk get a conversion off, is the question. Is he going to switch the conversion? Is he? Is he going to get it? Is he going to get it? Oh! Even with students. That is harsh. Two scouts for a monk? That is a great trade. I would be bloody happy with that. Oh, there's also a camel scout to be worried about. Okay, we're seeing a forward castle. I do not like that position in the slightest. He has started to make farms, though. I do like that. I don't I don't know why you would build it here. It's such a weird place. And it's so hard to really do anything with it. I'd much prefer it. I guess you're trying to avoid the line of sight of the gate, potentially. Can't see the Robocam. Unfortunately, there is no Robocam. Maybe... Maybe another time. But no promises. Okay. XX. Going for it again. Run away. Okay. Oh, he gets another conversion! He is a god with monks. Look at him go! He's converted three scouts, and he's lost two monks. It's especially sus against Trudens and Lithuanians. Yeah, exactly. It, it makes no sense to me, because you would expect the Trudens... Oh, sorry. You'd expect the Lithuanians to make scouts to contest the relics. Oh. So far, just the one relic for Mr. Dodo. On the other side, we've got just the one relic. Put your shoe as well. Are the Siege Elephants going to be able to kill the Siege Workshop in time? No, they are not. 
The nice thing is that the monks can heal the siege elephants instead of needing to repair them. Yeah, you just can, you, you convert the scouts, like, no worries. That's how it goes. I would like to see XX adding a Manganel. I guess he's going to do Redemption soon instead, so that he can convert the mangoes. I guess that works too. Or the scouts potentially dive in. I guess that's also an option. Random militia. Okay, you've petarded your way in, but you don't actually have any military units yet. Normally you want to make three or four units and then do the petard so that you can actually get instant value. But I guess potentially the one is going to be enough. Smush Masterclass of Access. Yeah, just be incredibly lucky with your monk conversions. Just as, you know, Hera says, monks are completely overpowered and broken beyond belief. He's getting Sanctity now, getting that extra HP. He didn't even have Sanctity before when he was getting those conversions off. Like, whew, what a god. Attack rounds? Oh, all that good work wasted. All those good conversions just absolutely thrown away. By one brilliant attack around there by Woot. That was a really good job. Getting his own monks out for the defense. And he does have a solid build lead, right? 44 builds to 50? Like, it's not crazy build lead, but it's still a build lead. The big issue is that he doesn't have access to stone, so he can never go for a defensive castle. Which is going to be a, a slight bit of a problem. Holding open the wall on this side with the Jembos. One conversion down. Monk just jumps into the TC. 4TC boom, you're going to have a Manganel to defend as well soon. I think Marley is in a decent position, if I'm being honest. Because Faley's eco is just... Meh, not very great. The, the monk push should just be hard stopped by atonement. I... Initially, yes, if you recognize that they're monk rushing you right at the start. The problem is, like, at this stage, is that there's too many other things going on in the game. I guess it depends on if they have atonement. But if you have a tournament and they don't, then I guess you're in a good spot. Oh, one mango down. But I think he used two monk juices to get that. He did. Oh, one more attack round. Get the monk. Okay, one of the monks goes down. The allies are marching forwards once again. I still think I would like to see a, a manganel instead. Uh, let's go back. Let's just check out the relic. How are we? We've got three relics already for yellow. Two relics for green. Where is... Oh, yeah. There is a monk going out that way. So he's going to get up to get up to three himself. Where are the other relics on the map? There is another one. And this one over here. So yeah, yellow is comfortably going to have four relics. And then get up to five pretty soon. 74 bills. They're equal on bill counts as well. Obviously the Burgundians do have their eco upgrades a little bit faster. So their eco is slightly ahead. Oh, conversions. Oh, two mangoes. For one monk. For two monks. Does he get the third mango as well? Does he get it? Does he? Get it? Oh, he deletes it as well. Very smart. Very good job by Woot there. Oh, but the mango! Oh! Nice. That was well done. That was very well done. The elephants are in, but what are they in for? What are they going to do? They can't really kill hills. Could XX not maybe be moving to yellow? Uh, Possibly? Although yellow could just quite easily be making, you know, five or six like have, and then just chill. We do see the dodo is up to imp first. With not quite the most wheels in the game. But, you know, up there. He's actually second, I didn't even notice Tolan. Tolan is up first, and then Dodo, and then Mr. Bug. Yellow will be up shortly, as soon as he finishes a villager, probably, it looks like. So all four pockets on the way up to imp. And then on this side, Marley is a solid, almost 30 bills ahead of Faley. Faley's still on the 1TC. He is preparing for a fast imp, is what it looks like. He has, what, 800 food? Yeah, 800 food, not a lot of gold, though. So he's going to need to full sell something. Oh, that is a ballsy bloody castle. Can you attack around? Going for a tower. I mean, I would just ignore the Genbos. Yeah, just shoot the bills. Just out-repair the Jembos and kill these villas to deny this castle. And then you probably win this side. Like, because this sort of a castle has to imply that he's doing a fast imp. Yep, now that the tower's up, these last villas just target the different ones. Oh, that is a... That is a bit of a throw, if I'm being honest. It's a, it's a throw. That is a throw from Faley. He could have just gone up to imp, sold his stone, started trebbing, doing things like that. 
Oh boy. For this side though, XX, 60 deals, 75 for Woot. Woot is ever so slightly ahead, but oh man, the monk shenaniganry continues once again. Oh. Ah. Where, where's the NBL clip? I convert one monk, you convert it back. I convert it one monk, you convert it back. That's exactly what we're seeing here, but the elephants are just marching forwards, and they're just going to start to kill TC soon. Unless the mangoes can hit them first. There's one monkey trying to heal. <laughs> I think the TC will go down, but all the elephants are essentially dead. Like, they're, they're so low HP. As long as the mangoes can get, like, any sort of half-decent shot on them. Yeah. <laughs> they just they just fall over right there. The follow-up, though. Oh, we're going for knights. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about the knights. I guess the knights are just going to come in here and completely clean up this push. But the Coussier... Are just gonna absolutely shrek these knights, I think. I think you needed to go for Lightus if you really wanted to have a a solid chance against the superior Burgundian Eco and Burgundian units, in my opinion. Also, by the way, Woot has had to buy a castle here. Which is definitely gonna strain his economy quite a bit. Although I do say that he is still ahead of XX. So essentially they're both out of this game and we just have the two pockets duking out on the side. Over here though, we have Helms plus Condos. Oh, the castle went up! What? How did this castle go up? Um... Okay. This is how the castle went up. This... <laughs> Sends a quarter of your ego to build the castle. Makes sense. Well, it was already being tripped down and he sent a quarter of his ego to do it. I guess that does make sense. I don't think that was the wisest decision, if I'm being completely honest. I, I, yeah, I don't think that was incredibly smart. Noz told you Faley will heal Rush. I mean, he, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he did. He got a little bit of a rush going there. I guess I should, I should retake, uh, take back my claim about the Knights being bad. The Knights are better than Crucier early, because you're just able to spam them out so much easier, right? It's much easier to build seven stables than it is to build seven castles, right? There's only three castles for Dodo right now. But in the long run, the Coustier are going to be so much stronger, especially if he's microing really well, right? You come in, you patrol in, you get a bunch of hits in, and then you run back, all right? You just, you just one shot, five, six, seven, eight of these Cavalier, and then you leave, and then you wait for the charge attack to regroup, and then you do it all over again. Oh, these monks, these monks are just going to get shredded absolutely blown up but then like he needs to leave as soon as he kills the monks he should leave oh you're gonna die for the eco instead i don't like that such i don't like that i think that will be a waste of your army i mean you're gonna kill some bills but red is i mean let's be honest red's not really in this game right now you just need to keep your army advantage i mean like your stronger army and keep trying to take good trades while you get ideally stone walls across the map so you can start trading would be what i want to see we're seeing the full infantry play for Bug. He's taking the champions as well, and he's also going for Siege Ram. I don't think Rams is the correct play. You're up against Chakrams, which are like hand cannons on a stick. Like, as long as he keeps microing, he's going to be able to get brilliant pass-through damage shots like this. What we need... Yeah, okay, there we are. Onagers. That's what I wanted to see from Bug. Condos plus Onagers, I think, was definitely the correct army choice. It buys blue time. I mean, blue's got 100 vils. Okay, blue does have a very sick eco all of a sudden. How many TCs does he have? He has a lot of TCs. He has six TCs. Once he clicks up to imp, he's going to get a bunch more vils. I guess I don't hate it. What's his army choice going to be? Probably elephant archers to support the Custier. Yeah, I like that. Gajara's struggle against Helbeso. Um, Yes. Although, when you waste this many resources on units early game, that's definitely not great. But, oh, okay, here does come the Dodo Swing. This should just absolutely clean up right here. Oh, attack rounds. I mean, that's, that was decent. That was decent. Bailey is also an imp. He's getting a treb of his own. Uh, he's going to start making some bombard cannons. He doesn't really have any actual army that is useful right now, though, is the issue. But yeah, they've taken a nice position here. 
Oh, but now Yellow's trying to swing north, and the Coussier are just whacking away at them with their big glance things. I don't actually know what their weapon is. I'm not a, I'm not a history nerd, but it's a very cool-looking weapon. Look at them just swinging away with their big pole arms. Again, though, you, you just want to be constantly taking even fights. Or, or good fights, right? You come in with these guys. You get your attack bonuses. You leave. You hit. You hit. You leave. Long glaive. Is that what it is? Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we're seeing the onages. Does he have siege engineers? No, not yet. That plus one extra range would be very useful, but we are starting to see hussars coming out from Tolan. And he's also checking into camels. Just so that he can try to snipe the siege a little bit easier. But here comes a big paladin switch. Dodo did the first switch, and now we see Choo Choo going for the second switch. Gonna kill that Treb, gonna absolutely clean up this army right now. And Faley really just is not contributing very much at all right now. He's got a single trebuchet. He had a single trebuchet. And he has three... Three Jembers. And he's... Oh, he's even taking into SO. I think he definitely does need SO. The problem is... They've just got such a massive army disadvantage right here. They're equal on bills, but they're 40 almost 50 army behind all over the map red's getting into arbs blue is just going for helms helms make sense when you're against all these paladins but you got to think about what's red going to make and red's going to make arbs which is going to help support this all oh, if you can clean up these four siege weapons that would be pretty massive unfortunately tullin does lose that castle right there yeah all the bomber cannons all the trebs are going to die and then he just, yeah, again, just keep hitting and running. Hitting and running. That's what you need to do. And while this is going on, you do still have big cab numbers floating around the other side of the map. And now we're starting to see the Chuton bombard cannons. Does he have the Siege Engineers? He does not yet have Siege Engineers. It is on the way right now, which is going to help counter the Slav SO. And something that I do have to bring up here is that Buggy is, I believe, the lowest rated player on Mr. Dodo's team. So it, it is a safe assumption that his SO micro and control is probably not what you would really want to have, unfortunately. You know, just just putting that out there. So it is just possible that they're going to have a very rough time here against the number one and number two player on Tolan's team. Because really, they, they are losing hard here and he needs to get big SO shots to stand any chance at staying alive. And I don't know if that's likely to happen. As harsh as that is to say. And also the SO that was doing SO... The, on it, blah, words. The Siege Workshop that was doing Siege on Job was denied. Or destroyed, I should say. Arbs coming into the fight. I don't know if the Bomber Cannons really help at this stage. I say that as he does get a pretty decent attack round right there. But I think Red needs to focus more on getting more Arb numbers. Right, I think he needs to get 40 or 50 arbs, whether he's at a point where he's able to, you know, one-shot the Coustier, get big damage in, before he tries to worry about the siege weapons. Let, let Choo Choo deal with it, right? He has a bunch of relics. He has five relics. He's got a decent gold income at the moment. But it does actually look like that they're, they are stalling out here. And, like, this is the issue with Paladin, is that they're faster, but they're not as strong as the Lysus. And then now, because there's no sign of any trade, we've got one single trade cart being created by Mr. Tullen. It does look like this side is going to start being a loss for Tullen's team, but on the other side, they are just winning so hard that I don't think it really matters. Right, there, there's units in here. They were raiding Faley's ego. They just need to keep pushing harder. They just need to ignore Faley. Destroy this forward base from Bug, and then get into his ego is, I think, where they want to be going right now. Run, Faley. Running some bills probably would not be a horrible idea, let's be honest. Uh, where is the markets? Okay. Talon is starting to drop some markets, and a market over here as well. Okay, so he wants to trade with Mr. Marley. Makes quite a bit of sense. Over on this side, once again, the helps are actually being pretty decent. Just because the, the ARB numbers were never really there for Woot. Like, the most he had was, what, 15, maybe 20 arbs? Which is just not enough when you're fighting incredibly strong post simp units like the Coustier. And now, here come the Sea Jellies. Gonna you know, nom 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 down all these buildings right here. We're starting to see Hussars. The, the winged Hussars for the Lithuanians being added in. But I think, unless they were confident that they were going to win this game, they needed to start adding in Siege. Oh, sorry, not Siege. Trade. 
Oh, he's even got this much gold. There is so much gold on this map still. Why does he have so much gold? He's got all of these golds and even these stones down here you can take and sell. That's insane. But yeah, what I should say is like, they wanted to be stonewalling this space between Marley and the front of Shushu's base. They can safely be trading, safely farm out here and not have to worry about these raids coming in. Because I think once Lithuanians has, you know, 40 or 50 trade cards and they're able to constantly make lightest, they should just absolutely roll through whatever's happening here. I did say that they were winning hard here, but actually it seems the bug is... Bug is holding for the time being. Marley's only got the, the single bomber cannon right here. He's got some more someplace else coming forward. He's also got some trebs coming out for Tolan. I think Tolan is actually having to deal with these raids coming in on the other side. So he's having to reroute some of his military to go help out the other side. And yeah, the scores have just switched here. Stream stuttering, or is it just me? Um, on my end, I have no dropped frames. Oh, encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings. Hmm. I will look into that after this game is finished. Did Tolan get unique tech? Uh, I've got no idea. I would assume so, because the uh, the food discount is pretty strong. But, uh, I am not really in a position to check this. Oh my god, Woot is just absolutely gutted. Woot's down to 26 vills. And they are all in his base right now. If these vills aren't able to leg it and get out past the Escusier here, he might get defeated. Maybe notifications on site? Oh, yep. Yeah, we discussed that last time, didn't we? Um, turn off, 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 off. There we go. The Vils are making a run for it. Is Woot going to survive? Is the question. Is he going to make it? He's down to 24 Vils. There's still a couple of them hiding down the bottom, but most of them are here trying to make a run for it. He's into the TC now. He is safe for the time being, but not really a part of this game. And it, it looks like we might be seeing the first 2-0 of the tournament. Dodo's team is in a very, very commanding position. Trade-wise, there's four trade cards, and that's about it. On the other side, we've got 15 trade cards already for XX. Faley's starting to make trade. Helped, I guess, by the Italians. Maybe he got the unique deck for cheaper trade cards. That would be nice. And then, of course, the Burgundians do have gold farmers. Plus, he also has three relics. So he's essentially got... Four and a half relics, something like that, which is like a decent amount of gold income to be able to start setting up his own trade if he needs to. No, no, the lag does seem to be on my end, but hopefully this game ends soon. As harsh as that is to say. And then I will look at... Um... Fixing that. Yeah, I, I think that Bug has been doing an amazing job on the side, because really, Faley has not been a part of this game for the past 25 minutes. But Bug has been holding as the two strongest players on, on Team Tolan. Obviously, Tolan has been dealing a little bit with the other side, but for the most part, you know, he's been microing his SO pretty well. He's been not wasting too many units, and he's been keeping them somewhat stuck in their base, not completely gutting out Faley. Not getting into his own eco, harassing any potential trade, and now we're starting to see some stone walls coming through the middle of the map. This is what I like to see. Ideally, I would have liked to see it, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago, but better late than never. Secure that trade, prevent any raids, be nice and safe. Oh, I just really want to see an SO shot on these champions. I'm seeing still the full helms plus armored elephants from XX. So he probably has quite a bit of gold in the bank. Oops, I went too far. I went the wrong way, there we are. Gold. Nope, never mind. He's got 44 vills on gold, though. So... I guess he did just finish the gold? Yeah, okay, now he's dropping down, but he does have a decent amount of gold in the bank, since he's not really making gold-heavy units. He's primarily making trash and rams, essentially. Oh, there's still two more vills down here. He's got a new TC here. Not exactly the best place to reboom, but it, uh... 
it is a place, I guess. Could also be selling his gold. That is also a possibility. But he, he has been investing quite heavily in trade. Yeah, yeah, like the trade boom, essentially. And then either just full slinging it to other players who can use it better or switching it to elephant archers is definitely the play here. But I think it is almost a matter of time. I guess these three hussars could potentially kill a lot of bills if Buggy's not paying attention. But Buggy, he is just poking back and forth. That's absolutely fine. And then Dodo is fighting both the pockets with support from XX. And then Woot is just... Woot is dead. And Faley is doing the team thing. He's setting up walls to the middle of the map. Setting up trade himself so that he can sling. And he's starting to make some genbos as well. Oof. Yeah, the Hussar raids. He's killing quite a few bills. 10 kills already. But... I think it's just a little bit too little, too little. Like, just making Lithuanian winged hussars versus full helms is not the best unit choice, let's be honest. It's not really what you want to be seeing. I mean, I guess they're doing pretty well against the uh, siege elephants, but now there's some trebs here as well. And while this is going on, Dodo is just full fighting Tolan. And while that happens, you've got a flank fighting a pocket, a pocket fighting a pocket, and then a pocket fighting a flank. So everyone's just sort of like rotated around one position, as it were. And here is just a big mass of SO. This is really unkillable, unless Bot Marley gets some amazing bomb by cannon shots off. Which, I don't think is really on the cards right here. He's got a single bomb by cannon, looks like he's got basically no gold income, so he can't replace them. Did Winged Hussar get Siege Attack Bonus, or just Mega Hussar? Um, let's click on one, and let's take a look. They have plus 4 versus Gunpowder, plus 14 versus Monks, and that is it. Getting a lot of kills with his SO, unfortunately here's his own army. Oh no! Oh, that's unfortunate. Where are the Halbs? Oh! I mean... He just killed half of his SO with his own SO. Please don't shoot again. Don't shoot again. Don't shoot again. Oh. I like this idea. Trying to just cut the wood line and get into... Into Bot Marley's base. I like that. And really at this point, I think Tullin is just... Praying for a miracle. Because this game looks pretty over in my mind. Tower Shields is coming in. Switching into your own helms is a little bit too late, I think. This is Buggy's unkillable army. The only thing that can kill Buggy is Buggy. That's that's how it goes. And like even Dodo's getting walls up to the middle of the map somewhat. Oh, I can't actually see the chat. I assume that that was somebody saying GG. Yeah. GG it is. Well played, and we do see the very first 2-0 of the tournament. I thought it was looking really dicey in early castle age, to be honest. I felt like the very, very slow SO transition from Bucky was going to give Tullin a chance to push back and and clean Faley's base and maybe get into Bug. But then the Dodo, the, like the timing from Dodo with his Coustier switch, cleaning up that early army was just absolutely impeccable. Just perfectly timed, perfectly played. And then I feel like Choo Choo just didn't really use the timing advantage that Paladin provide. Because, I, like, as I was saying, like that is, in my mind, the biggest advantage to using Paladin over Lightus. I guess they're slightly better against ranged units as well. Because the Paladin have more ranged units. But, but Lightus are so much better at fighting any melee unit, especially Helbs. Like, Lightus with two relics, three shot Helbs, which is absolutely insane. They just absolutely rip through them. They probably do similarly well to Elite Custier, but then they're just cheaper than Paladin. Which then, because they're cheaper and they cost less gold, it gives you it's much easier for you to transition into trade, and the the extra gold income that you get from the relics is enough to essentially buy those first ten to fifteen trade cards that you need to start to exponentially grow that gold income. Buggy played super solidly. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I was questioning his SO micro, or like the potential for his SO micro, because I wasn't really watching him very closely. And then he just 
did an excellent job holding that side. Holding us as the top two players, obviously with some help from the rest of the team, but it was great. It was really well played. Let's go pay out. Oh, Dodo winning with only 13% of the bet. Oh, that is some, that is some payouts right there. The Dodo swings with the game changer? Oh, 100%. I, I think that, especially killing the very first army that Talon had, was what bought the rest of the team the time to get into what they needed.